In just a matter of days, it'll be one year since we've retired and gotten out on the road. Speak for yourself, it's been over a year for me. Yeah, if you remember, uh, she retired in April, just came home one day and said, I retired. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and then I retired June 1st, so in just a matter of days, we've been out on this, enjoying this RV life. It's amazing. Yep, we've learned a lot, and we had a great time. Made a lot of great memories, and learned a few things along the way. Today we want to share with you five things that we learned. Some of them took longer than others to learn, but we want to share those with you. Yeah, that way you will get these lessons earlier in life and we won't have to learn them from the school of hard knocks the way we did. Yeah, like I said, some of them took almost a year before we learned them. Yeah, I think we got it down now though. Don't jinx us. Don't jinx us. <laughs> One of the things that we wanted to learn over our first year was, did we really need a home base? What we found out this year is a home base works for us. It doesn't work for everyone, but it does work for us. And there are a few reasons for this. First thing, families first, always. And back in November and December, we were blessed that Danny's mom was able to come and stay with us for like two and a half yeah. months. We got to spend a lot of time with her while his brother was out of the country. Jeff went to Spain and Peggy stayed with us and we were very blessed to have that two and a half month time with her because she passed away while she was with us. Yeah, and uh, so having that home base really worked. We were able to, to rearrange the plans, have mom spend with us a quality time too. It was yeah. a great thing. We could not have done that if we would have had been in an RV somewhere and not had a place to stay with her. Because we actually thought if we stayed out in Arizona and mom stayed with us, but she wouldn't be able to do that. She had two strokes the previous year, but we did have a lot of quality time at two and a half months. She, she, was, she died peacefully in her sleep, but we just had a lot of good quality time uh, when she was there. And we couldn't have done it without having her on base. Also, we have nine grandchildren. Yep. And six of them are in our local area. And we have our oldest grandson, Tanner, graduating from high school uh, this year, this May. So we're going to be able to spend... Just about two weeks. Yep. Right before we jet out to, uh, up to go to Wisconsin. He's Michigan. the reason we're still at our home base right now. Yep. We love you, Tanner. And uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to plan things around and say, all right, we need to be back, back home during this time so we can have some of these events, birthdays, weddings, uh, graduations, etc. And the other thing we like about having a home base is we've talked to some people that do not have home bases and, and they struggle. What am I going to do for doctors and dentists? Do I go back home even though I don't have a house there? We're fortunate to be able to keep our doctors, plan all our appointments around the time we knew we are going to be home. And another reason we like having a home base is we know our mechanics for our cars, for our RVs. And everybody makes it work. Everybody makes whatever situation they're in work. And so this is just what works for us. Right. If we were full-time in an RV, we would make that work. We'd figure it out. Yeah. yeah, we'd figure it out. This is just easy for us right now. So another thing we learned is you absolutely have to be adaptable. Yeah, look at us. We retired early in life, and then all of a sudden we go from a good to great economy to the worst of my adult lifetime. And high gas prices, inflation, groceries Gas prices the roof. were $1.64 first decided to retire at the time we did. And what we've learned is that you might be spending money in another area, maybe you can adapt to save it elsewhere. And that's exactly what we did. We'll post a video on how we saved a lot of money in our campground fees, and that really saved the day by being able to save that money. Yeah, and if you can't, you eat out a little less when you've got to save money. There's a lot of things you can do to save money. And not only adaptable when it comes to the finances, but adaptable when it comes to where you're going, we totally planned on going to Alaska this summer. Sometimes it just doesn't pan out. You know, we can't afford the dollar or the four dollar over four dollars a gallon for gas to get to Alaska. Who knows how much it is through Canada? So we're staying closer to home. Right. And you got to be adaptable on, on campgrounds and finding them. I was so worried. We we're going to Florida, and we only made one reservation for a ten-week trip. So the first two weeks were done, and we played it by the seat of our pants for the next eight weeks. It but worked. It worked. We found something. Enjoyed ourselves. It was stressful at times, but it worked. Yeah, once or twice it was a little stressful, but we got through it. We found something quick, so maybe one time, and we, yep. four of us on the phones calling, we finally I found, found something. I found the home. Yeah. I found the place to work. So, and the way I look at it is something is going to be out of whack this year is the economy, and maybe even next year. But during our RV life, there's always going to be something that we've got to adapt to. There's always something. You know, life's, life's about changing. 
The old saying is, if you want to hear God laugh, just tell him your plans. Yep. Because things will happen, that will happen, and you just got to roll with the punches. Yep, things will, things will need to be changed. You'll need to adapt. Yep. So another thing we learned was a tow car is a must. Now this one took us about half the year. but it Took us a while to learn that. We're not slow learners, but we finally learned it. Well, we were a little nervous about it towing a car because we've never done that and this is our first RV so we had to learn to pull the RV we were trying to get comfortable with that first and we were using our e-bikes and they were working great for the yep. most part until you were too far away and plus a lot of our first year we were with friends that were pulling their fifth wheel or their trailer and we got to spend a lot of time with them and they just invited them to us along and we just shared in on the cost of gas yeah but also when we first decided to do this we decided that Renting a car would be less expensive than getting a car, buying a car, because we didn't have a car that would work in the tow car, so we had to buy a vehicle, and getting it hooked up, getting it all ready, because you can watch Daniel link that video somewhere, the cost of getting the tow car was huge, it was like $20,000. The time you buy a car, a used car, tow package, it's easy, $20, depending on what kind of vehicle. You if you wanted a Jeep. Did you get it done for $20? $20,000. $20,000. Our first original plan was to rent cars as we travel. However, we had not anticipated, this is being adaptable again, rental cars went from $30 a day, we could have got one $35 a day, every day of the week, to the last time I checked, it was $165 for one day for a compact. Yeah. That's not reasonable anymore. So that helped in our decision real quick. Yeah, that helped in our well, decision. Quick, to, it helped in our decision. Yeah, that helped us decide that we really did need a tow car. So if you're like us and you're nervous about pulling a car, don't be. Because if I can do it. Yep. We, if she can do it, I can do it. Yep. <laughs> you can do, do it. it. You can do it. And it's not that big of a deal. Hooking it up is even really easy. Also, we feel like our tow car actually saves us money because in our tow car, we get, we went for the compact. I mean, nothing fancy. But we get 40 miles to the gallon in our little tow car. And so now our RV, which gets eight miles to the gallon on a good day, is going from A to B, and we're leaving it at B longer than we did before. We're not as in a hurry to move because we got the car and we're going a you know an hour radius from our parking place, and so we don't want to move all the time. We want to leave that rig sitting there, and that saves us gas. So the next thing we learned about was maintenance. If you look back in some of the videos about this time last year, one of the things I want to do was get a little bit better at maintenance. He actually has. So thank you, YouTube. There's a lot of great people out there that will share knowledge with you. So we've been able to fix a lot of problems, do maintenance ourselves on the vehicle, such as caulking, checking the roof, uh, changing the oil in the generator, <laughs> all those kind of things. Something that it's not hard, especially when you got someone out there that takes you step by step, point by point. So we learned that you have to do that. And the other thing you need to know about maintenance is that things are always going to break. We had we had a leak every time it would rain; it would just pour in the ceiling. We actually had to take that down to a trailer place in Nashville and leave it down there for a few days. They did that air compression thing. Mm -hmm, they did. Uh, positive air pressure test. If you ever have a leak, that is a thing to have done because they find every place on your RV that that air comes out of, and then you just tell them to caulk everything. Right. That way you got it. You tell them to caulk everything, you've got it. It's, it was amazing. It wasn't very expensive. No, yeah, not when uh, we went. And they got to it real quick. And that's another great thing about having a home base. We were able to leave it down there for a week. We didn't have to move out and get to the hotel or anything like that. Yeah. They took it and fixed it. So, Things will break. You know, yeah. you've heard the story before. RVs or homes moving down the highway it feels like a, they're in a tornado every time they move. So yeah. things will, things will break. However, we were actually in the RV and we had a water hose in it under our bed that broke. And when that broke, we got a big gush of water everywhere. Came back and from being out for a little bit, and there was just water everywhere. So turn off your outside water when you leave your rig. Every time you leave your rig. And if you saw that video and the. the RV repair person said we did the great thing. We dried it up, used fans, got it cleared up, so no damage in the RV there. Mm -hmm. But you will have problems. You cannot stress out about it, and you can do a lot things of things are it. just going to break. And you can do a lot of it yourself. Yep. Some things you can't. When you can't, be willing to admit you can't too. So let me brag on my no maintenance husband. 
He actually fixed something, and I was amazed. Um, I watched Mac MacGyver before. You watched MacGyver before, <laughs> apparently. The levelers on the RV, is it the Bigfoot levelers? Yeah, the Bigfoot levelers. They came up, but because the pin was not touching the metal plate. It was bent a little bit. It was bent a little bit. The system thought they were still down. And so when I turned the car on, turned the motorhome on, it just all kinds of beeps and whistles and bells and everything was going off because it thought you were trying to drive off with the levels down. My husband out there, he tried to bend it back. would not bend back. We've got a new one now, so I guess he's going to try to put that in. Yep. <laughs> but he took a nickel out there and put a nickel between the pin and the metal plate. And when he did that, it made a connection. They've worked fine ever since. Yeah, it pushed the, the pin up just a little bit farther, so it told the sensor that it, they were up. Because they actually were up, we had no issue with, there would have been no issue with driving them, but we didn't want to drive down the interstate with all that beep, 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 beep. That was horrible. Yeah. So, you can fix things, you can get creative, and... Sometimes you gotta. Okay, so here's the biggest thing we learned. Slow down. Yep. As, as you, let me repeat that. Slow down. Slow down. The day I retired, June the 1st, she had the RV pack ready to go. I, was lucky I enough, got off a month before him. I was lucky enough for my boss to say, yeah, go ahead and cut out early. And we were on the road that very day. But we went from Maine to California. That was insane. Yep. So in we, one year. So we put a lot of miles on that first year. First. Actually, we did that in six months time. First six months, actually. Yeah. So, slow down. You're not on vacation. We're not on vacation. She had a lot of bucket list things you want to see. Yeah. We always talked about Route 66. We knew we wanted to be up north to see our grandkids, but it's okay to say we're going to do two things on this side of the United States, and then maybe next time two things on that side of the United States, yeah. instead of crisscrossing and, and adding the miles to your to your rig, especially with today's gas prices. Yeah, and we wouldn't do that now if we had to do it again, but I feel like that's one of those first year mistakes that a lot of people make. You feel like you're on vacation and you feel like you've got limited time, so you've got to go see things while you've got time to do it. And we just had this bucket list items and we did them. We've got time, so it's yeah. okay to slow down. We've, we've, we've stopped now. Y'all be proud of us. We, we do try to stay in one place for two weeks. Uh, sometimes we can't. We've got a trip coming up where we through northern Michigan up uh, UP. We'll bounce a little bit there and then get back into our thousand trails. But take time, slow down, and spend a little bit longer time at each spot. It'll save you money too. And just so you know, we wouldn't change a thing. We love this RV lifestyle and have been having a blast up and down the roads, meeting people, yeah. and just having a great time. We hope we have many, many more years to do this. So if you haven't already, we would really appreciate it if you subscribe to us. Yep, just take a minute, hit that subscribe button and that bell so you can see our next video. We're fixing to go to Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Well, I guess I live in Canada. Yep, I think we're missing That's a okay. videos. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. And we want to remind you, watch this video next. It's something you can use. Until next time, God bless and many safe travels. New RV, America.